Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Breaking news! iFragrance Official has released publicly the new Chanel Les Exclusives fragrance and its notes, top, heart, and base. And a whole text to go with it. Now we're just waiting for it to be released. And I also have news on the release date. So before we get to it, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco Balls spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. So exciting. I live stream several times a week. So come join the fun. Uh, we got a little Chanel Camellia to uh, celebrate this festive occasion. It was coincidentally there, but hey, it works very well. And we got a Chanel bag to celebrate. The smell of Chanel leather. Ah, titillating. One would almost wish that Chanel would create a perfume one day from the Les Exclusives range entitled called 255, The Perfume. And of course, we have our Les Exclusives bottle here. Example, we got 31 Rue Cambon Eau de Toilette in 200 ml. Just to celebrate this occasion, the brand new perfume hasn't been released yet. And the brand new perfume is called Comet. That's been official. Everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. So stick with it. Thumb up the video. Let me just sniff 31 Rue Cambon. Ah, you know what? To celebrate the occasion, I'm just going to spray 31 Rue Cambon just because it's a masterpiece of a fragrance. And I just... Oh, it's giving the vibes. Cue in the bottle of Comet. Okay, there it is. With the sticker not being centered and all that jazz. Whatever. Okay, so this is going to be the spelling. The E has the little accentiment. So it's Comet. Oh, okay. And everything that people have been speculating about, it kind of seems to be true. We are... Uh, we're basically finding out the ingredients list. And uh, I want to say thank you to Kev for sending me all the intel. Uh, super exciting. <coughs> so the information is on iFragrance Official or iFragrance Official. All right. Are you ready, Ferret? Uh, so this is going to be the 200 ml bottle they are also going to release a 75 ml bottle it will be available as an eau de parfum fragrance so this is how big it's going to be in in the hand unfortunately comet comes after the price increase so the 200 ml bottle is going to cost you 500 dollars plus tax the 75 ml bottle is going to cost you 325 dollars plus tax and if you are in europe the 200 ml bottle is going to cost you 405 euro. The uh, 75 ml bottle is going to cost you uh, 230 or 235 euro. Yeah, but the 200 ml bottle is going to be 405 euro. So it's really expensive at this point. But hey, and the release date. Chanel is stating, Intel tells me, May. May. 2024. However, Chanel has already started launching for influencers, their little kind of dinner invitations where they invite influencers to celebrate the launch of Comet. So maybe mm, Comet will be launched sooner than May, especially since Got uh, not Gautier, Guerlain just launched... Well, I received an email today Guerlain was promoting and said, hey, would you like to purchase this, Jacob? Guess what Guerlain just launched today? Yeah. Yeah, Guerlain just launched their Cherry Blossom Millezim. And Chanel is not going to be happy about this. And why is Chanel not going to be happy about this? Because everybody who has been speculating about the notes of this one was right. Cherry Blossom. And if Guerlain has a Cherry Blossom that maybe smells better than the Chanel Cherry Blossom, 
What are you going to do? So Chanel might just decide to launch this one sooner than later, just to be able to compete with Guerlain's Cherry Blossom that has been just launched today as I'm filming this video. And of course, like you would expect Cherry Blossom to have a pink juice, you would think, right? But no, Chanel goes a different route. So <clears throat> allegedly everything, of course, but here is the pyramid of notes. Top notes. You guessed it. Cherry Blossom. And they call it the Cherry Blossom Accord. And this is where I go, no, 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 no. You know that, that video that went viral of a little kitten that is like talking to its uh, person it lives with and it's like, no, 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 no. So, you know, I'm not a big fan of Cherry Blossom. So when I hear Top Notes Cherry Blossom, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> very, very sad. But maybe Chanel found a way to finally make Cherry Blossom smell not cheapish. Mm. Uh, but you see, I'm smelling 31 Rue Cambon and I'm like, what a masterpiece this thing is. Are we really going to go from this Shepra heaven to Cherry Blossom? Okay, okay, but anyway, so that's the top notes. Now let's head on over to the heart notes. Now, here is the second ingredient that a lot of people were talking about and were saying, oh, this, this is going to be uh, the base. Well, well, it's not, it's now the heart note, but like this is the heart note of the perfume. And again, whoever talked about it seems to have been right because the heart notes are listed as heliotrope. A lot of people were talking about heliotrope being another component or a chord in Comet. Now, granted, this photo looks like the photo of a real thing with the sticker being off center, which does happen with Chanel perfumes, okay? I have a few that have a sticker off center purchased directly from Chanel, obviously. But maybe there's going to be a plot twist. Maybe this juice is going to be pink after all. Although Chanel, you know. Um, you know, they're not going to, they're not probably going to change it. I think Chanel is going to play it whatever they consider classy. So they're going to keep it in this kind of yellowish juice. But heliotrope is in the heart notes together with... Drum roll, please. Oh, Vel says in the chats, I like heliotrope, but cherry blossom, no. Yeah, cherry blossom is a total no-go for me. But hey, maybe Chanel manages to create a miracle and makes me like cherry blossom. Uh, you know, until I don't smell it, I'm not going to dump it. You know what I mean? Like, first, let me, let me, like, let's give a girl a chance before we quit the romance. A little rhyme here. But so, heart notes. Heliotrope and Iris. Now, Iris, <clears throat> you know, Iris and Oris Root are a staple of Chanel. Now, I would say that the Cherry Blossom Accord in the top notes is going to be mixed in with aldehydes. Every Chanel perfume has aldehydes in it. So I guess it's a Cherry Blossom Accord with aldehydes. And then in the heart, we got Heliotrope and Iris. Iris... You know, Iris gives a heavy powder accord. Interesting how heliotrope. Heliotrope is a slightly sickly sweet, also powder accord. So I'm wondering if the trick in making a cherry blossom good is by amping all the powder, making it very dry and powdery and cosmetic-y, like a cosmetic vibe. That could be interesting. Iris with the powder accord, heliotrope with the powder accord, drying down that, you know, shampoo vibe that cherry blossom usually has. Usually cherry blossom and perfume smell very cheap to me. But then Chanel, like I said, hoping Chanel is not going to have a cheap smell for it. So, aldehydes in the top with cherry blossom. Then the heart, iris and heliotrope. And then Chanel takes us to the base notes. Don't forget, this is an eau de parfum. Don't forget, this is Olivier Polge. 
This is not Jacques Polge. So what's it going to be in the base notes? You do the math. It's always been the same. <clears throat> with, with Olivier Polge. I'll give you a hint. 1957. Exactly. Kev and Vel and Gloria and Moise, uh, Moise Speck, all of you guessed it. Musks. Heavy musk. Heavy musk bass accord. So we have those synthetic musks that Chanel is known for. And those synthetic musks that we particularly encounter in many different facets. I think there's five to eight musks in 1957. Not my favorite Les Exclusives perfume, to be honest. So Chanel's musks don't really, you know, they don't do it for me. They're okay, but I've had better musks. <laughs> but so there you go. We got musk. Iris, Heliotrope, Cherry Blossom, Accord, and Aldehydes. Vel says, hmm, I like the sound of everything except for the Cherry Blossom. This will either be amazing or awful. But Vel, here's what I'm thinking. Why on earth would... I mean, was it Olivier or was it the marketing team? Probably the marketing team who decided... What, how to name the perfume. They called their, you know, the, the three chicks that are doing the makeup artist, artistic direction at the moment at Chanel. They're, they're also called the, the Comet something something alliance. Chanel keeps creating the Comet jewelry. And now we got the Comet perfume, but like a comet, like a shooting star. Cherry Blossom? is not how I would envision a smell of a comet. So let's like rein it back in. Did they make the perfume first and invented a name later? Or did they make the name first and then made a perfume to match that name? Given the title, given the name and given the notes, I would say they first... <laughs> I would say they first created the perfume and then thought, oh, you know, well, our Asian market is quite strong at the moment. So everybody's going to launch in Europe cherry blossom fragrances. Chanel has to do it, too. So, you know, yeah, let's do cherry blossom fragrance, but we call it Comet because it's kind of cool. Yeah. Zeitgeist says, I think Comets smell like gunpowder, LOL, because of that kind of glowy thing in the back. And then here is what... Um, here is what I Fragrance Official writes about the perfume. They say, bright, intense aroma of... Oh my gosh, wait, this is from... This is from Chanel, I think, because it's like under, you know, quotation marks. So this might be, I'm not sure, but this is from I Fragrance Official, the text, which might be given by Chanel or not. So everything's alleged, but let's read the text. If this is Chanel, we're going to get a bigger insight into how this perfume smells. Bright, intense aroma of fresh cherry blossom, enhanced by notes of iris and heliotrope, an intense floral fragrance similar to stardust with a powdery musky touch. A trail of stardust and a heaven <coughs> and a heavenly jewel that chooses its own path and never deviates from it in reflection of Gabriel Chanel. It is a halo of light spreading a force of optimism to those convinced that the planets will align with their lucky stars. Well, la di da. <laughs> <laughs> well, a la di da. That second paragraph, girl. We'll go, we'll go. I know, right? Zeitgeist is like, well, I love how perfume descriptions are always so verbose. Vel is like, what a load of crap. <laughs> Johnny's like, very po po poetic. Um, 
you know. Oh, interesting. Lanier Smith says a comet or a comet should smell ozonic and metallic. Hmm. <laughs> Lanier says purple prose for a space rock, baby. Daria says OMG. There you go. Now, the, the text continues. A new marvel in the constellation of Les Exclusives de Chanel, an olfactre gem symbolizing optimism. Comet celebrates the excellence and the unique know-how of Chanel Parfumeur. Tcha. Just like this traveling star, the Eau de Parfum is imbued with a fresh and delicate cherry blossom accord, while a trace of luminosity and purity transforms into an aura set with heliotrope notes blending into a cloud of iris extract. Aha! Uh -huh. Now we have a little bit more added to this description. It's an iris extract. We'll go, we'll go. Well, what else would it be? You know what I mean? And a musk accord. It is a universe in itself. <clears throat> oh, we got a quote from Olivier Polge. Okay, hold your horses, everybody. Mr. Polge himself... <coughs> Mr. Polish himself has something to say. So take several sits. Take several sits and listen. Olivier Polge says, and we quote, At the beginning, <laughs> no, he said, At the beginning of every creation, you need an element of inspiration. And in Comet, the starting point was the idea of stardust. So he's trying to tell us that Chanel marketing team came to him with the idea of Comet. It's not like he had a perfume and then they added the title later. But of course, they can be lying about anything at any given time. You know the secrecy about perfume making. They, they invent whatever they want. But let's take him at face value, okay? The comet is a strong symbol for Chanel, and I am thinking in particular of the comet pen pendant, the pendant, from the 1932 high jewelry collection. Worn open and draped directly over the skin, it reminds me of the enveloping effect of a perfume on the skin. Well, we'll go, we'll go. Coincidentally, you could apply the same notion to 31 Rue Camon, drive, right, you know, wearing it around the skin. 1932, the Chanel is exclusive fragrance dedicated to the 1932 platinum and diamond collection. You know how much I love that collection. All the, you know, Chanel platinum jewelry that I can find I collect. Coincidentally, this is all they make still, is, is these very simple streamlined rings, the Rubin rings. Uh, that's the only stuff they still make in platinum. So if we're going to talk about the 1932 platinum collection and also the Comet necklace that they still produce today, but out of white gold, no longer out of platinum. And we're going to try to translate that into perfume form. I still don't think cherry blossom would be the, the ingredient, <laughs> the accord that I would put in the top notes. If we think about 1932, the fragrance, what is very um, symbolic of that perfume is the pear. Sparkling, diamond-like aldehydes, but it's the pear accord that gives the right silage to this fragrance and, and gives it a vibration. Also, the pear connected to the pear-shaped diamond makes 1932 a very special sparkling jewel of a fragrance. Comet, as per Olivier Polge's words, we're kind of trying, we're starting to visualize what they're talking about here. They're not talking about the actual body 
of a comet in space, but they're rather talking about the trail of stardust it leaves behind on its path. So, this perfume seems as though the bottle is the comet. And when you spray, the thing that comes out is the stardust behind. So the comet is, fl is flying away, right? It's flying somewhere. And as it's flying somewhere, the, the perfume sprays outwards. And that's the stardust that the comet, you know, the trace, the comet trail or the comet trace that it leaves behind. It's almost as if they're saying to us, the, per the perfume is actually the dust, the stardust. But the comet is the bottle. So why didn't they just call it stardust? I guess because too many other perfumes are called stardust already. And there's not a lot of perfumes called comet. Maybe. Johnny says, love the imagery. <coughs> the imagery. <coughs> Kev says, sounds like this is going to have the lasting power of a comet as well. <laughs> Oh my God, Kev, the shade you just threw. So Kev is saying, well, Comet is going to come and go, baby, and that's it. <laughs> it's not going to stay. Um, Avatar in the chat says, as a perfume collector, Comet intrigues me. As a Chanel lover, of course, Comet, everything they do intrigues me. But, um, but JJ says, Stardust doesn't sound quite Chanel. Hmm. And Grace Chen says, well, maybe stardust is too long a word, especially in French. It would have been a long word, probably. Uh, you know. Lanier Smith says, maybe it should be like a pear cocktail. Oh, honey. Nothing like drinking a nice little pear grappa, sweet one, while you're sniffing on 1932. The perfume, mm, those two together, divine, divine. So there you go. There you go. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to think about here, you know, especially because we haven't actually smelt it yet. And, you know, it's very curious to me. Um, there is another visual uh, that Chanel created for Comet uh, that um, <clears throat> is kind of drawn out. And it is a visual of this bottle hitting the ocean. And in the sky on the side is a comet flying by with the stardust trail behind it. I can show you one corner of the image because this one is not on this website. So we're just going to show you a glimpse of it. You see? There you go. That's another visual by Chanel. You see that shooting golden thing in the corner there? That's a comet and that's their visual for this shooting. You would call it shooting star, really. You know, comet is a shooting star in a way. I mean, it's not a shooting star. There's no such thing as a shooting star. They all but we call them shooting stars. Um, oh, Kev says that one is on the website as well. Okay, so it is public. Then we can show it. Okay, perfect. Well, then here you go. Are you ready for this one then? Oh, the poussière d'étoile. Yes, too long, but beautiful, says Johnny. So maybe that's what they should have called the perfume. Okay, Yana says it is actually on the website. Okay, then here's the next reveal. This is the art drawing of Comet. A very fascinating choice. Why did they choose water? There you go. And I am very confused by this because... Well, the visuals Chanel are giving us are very confusing because, I mean, it's a night. It's, it's the ocean in the middle of the night. So it gives me darkness and water vibes. And one of the comets fell into the water and creates all of these waves. 
bursting up as the comet, the bottle fell into the water. And there's a second comet in the sky flying away. And we have that stardust behind it. Um, so it's giving me water accords. It's, it's giving me deep night mystery, the deep ocean, deep blue turning into black. It's very bizarre. You know, and, and the waves, the, the foam of the waves is white, but they reflect the gold of the perfume. So you do have that little bit of yellow on the top of the bottle, as you can see. It's hard to see, but yeah, you can see like this a little bit more. A shooting star is actually a falling meteor hitting our atmosphere, says Terry. Yeah, but sometimes you can visualize, you know, when you're looking into the sky and you see that shooting star of a falling meteor, it's not like they're falling downwards. They Usually when you see them in the sky, they're kind of passing by. They're usually kind of flying this like that, you know, in this direction. that, And it does feel like they're going upwards. So I understand this visual. To me, this is not strange. I've seen shooting stars shoot in that direction. <laughs> Claire says, it looks like the abominable snowman. Um, Kev says, I would have preferred aldehyde, tuberose, iris, suede, and ambergris. Ooh, Kev. Well, that's an interesting combination. It would have stank the house down, but I would have liked it as well. A natural, true ambergris with a suede accord, iris, tuberose, then aldehydes. I mean, it would have skanked up the house. But would have loved that. Yeah. Yeah, Val, give me that whale poo. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a scary vision. You know, all of the, the waves kind of clashing together as the comet falls in. But you can see here on the side, the drawing of the, of the, um, of the water kind of building up into these foams, in, into the foam of the, of the waves hitting, and then the starry sky. It's a haunting vision, but I just think that the vision, that this visual might not live up to the actual notes in this perfume. I think this is from the fragrance community. All of us who love Chanel perfumes, we've all been really baffled by the fact that when we first heard about it being cherry blossom based, we were all like very taken aback. Like, really? That's like the literally the worst ingredient you could use for, for a perfume. It's just very difficult and, and very easy can go so wrong. Uh, cherry I In fact, there's not one single cherry blossom perfume that I like. Okay. I haven't smelt them all, but the ones I have smelled, I'm just like, oh, it's giving beauty salon hair treatment and not the most expensive kind of hair treatment. Vel also says, yep, I never smelled a cherry blossom I liked. It's very shampoo. Yeah, it's very shampoo, Henny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lanier says, I'm with Kev about the um, ambergris tuberose accord. That would have been much better with the iris. Um, you know, so I don't know. Ah, Isabella making a joke. Is it a foam or FOMO? It's a bit of both. <laughs> it does co contain aldehydes, Shane. Yes. Um, <clears throat> oh, Kev is asking, I wonder if it's going to smell like giggling schoolgirls putting on mob's powder for the first time. Hmm. Bath and Body Works, yeah. Yeah, the Cherry Blossom definitely gives Bath and Body Works. Uh, Lanier says, to me, Cherry Blossom gives pre-teen vibes, says Lanier Smith. It, it, it is very naive, innocent in a, in a weird way. I, I know what you're saying. And, and it never, it, it always smells very synthetic to me. You know, Yeah. The one from L'Occitane is cute, but like something you use after showering or going to the gym, says Lidovina. Um, it's giving cleaner or cleanser vibes, says Please and Fruit Gummy. Um, so there you go. 
Avatar says 1932 Chanel has pear in it. Yes, uh, we were just talking about the, the pear note in 1932, uh, just a couple of minutes ago in this video. Um, so, you know, <laughs> Ellen here says, I'm going to use an old word, teeny bopper. Now, I would be fine with it being a teeny bopper if the perfume actually had a teeny bopper price. They're charging us $500 for this. So how are you going to justify the price? You got to give a substance to a perfume. Like you got to make it smell like nothing else can smell like it for me to be able to say, oh, yeah. Yeah, it hurts to spend 500 bucks on this perfume, but I will spend it. Now, if, on the other hand, the perfume smells like something that you can get, you know, from CVS... <laughs> then I would be like, why $500? Why, why again? $500 plus tax? <clears throat> so that, that's my issue, you know. <sighs> exactly, Lanier. Like, if you're going to make the, this cost $500 and you're going to use cherry blossom, you got to make it smell like $500 million for me to want to spend $500 on it. I completely get what you're saying, and I agree with you. Um, you know, and Leduvina says, well, Cherry Blossom is just too casual. Let's wait for the reviews because it's going to be super expensive, that comet. Uh, JJ says Japanese people use Cherry Blossom in dessert and pudding and mochi. So even for them, I think it'll give childish vibes. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, Shane, they are making the smaller bottle. The smaller bottle is going to, the 75 mil bottle is going to cost uh, $325 plus tax. So there you go. Teresa says they should have used an ice accord for a top note as comets are chunks of ice uh, and they would be made out of, it would have made more sense than cherry blossom. I have a sneaky suspicion that Chanel marketing team was thinking, you know, we are quite where we are currently quite big on the Asian market and a lot of our clients come from Asia and a lot of the revenue that we're making comes from Asia. So let's expand on that and let's make a perfume that is targeted to that audience. And that's why I think they thought cherry blossom was a clever idea. Just like several years ago, <coughs> they targeted the Middle East, <coughs> pardon me, and they targeted it specifically with Le Lion de Chanel, so much so that Le Lion de Chanel was released first in the Middle East many months before it was released in the rest of the world. Uh, they made a point about not having any oud in Le Lion de Chanel, uh, but they overdosed in labdanum and incense and hay accord. It's a masterpiece of a perfume because it has the heft and the longevity. Um, and because it did not play with the most obvious cliche note for the Middle East, which would be oud. And Chanel said, no, we're going to make a Middle Eastern type of fragrance for our clients there, but not what you would expect. We're not going to do the oud like everybody else is doing. So I really respected Chanel for that move. And boy, was it a good move because the labdanum in Le Lion de Chanel is a masterpiece. I mean, that labdanum is sex in a bottle. It is just incredibly wonderful. But now it seems as though, hey, let's make a perfume for, you know, for, you know, Asian market. And uh, what's the biggest cliche we could do? Cherry Blossom, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they didn't surprise me. The only thing that's left now is to actually sniff it once it's out and see if the iris heliotrope musks manage to overcome the cherry blossom and turn it into something interesting. There you go. Nat says, true, just like jewelry makers promote rose gold heavily for that market. Zeitgei said, even Dior reformulated Miss Dior for the Asian market. Very light and sugary. There you go. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Yo, you guys. <laughs> uh, subscribe, thumb up this video. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love.
any other intel you got to share, leave it down below or, you know, drop me an email to superdacob at gmail.com. Love you loads. Take care. Bye. Mwah.